So what is state design pattern? See, according to Gangopher definition, state design pattern allows us uh, or allows an object to alter its behavior when its internal state changes. So we can say that in simple word, we can say that the state design pattern allows an object to completely uh, change its behavior depending on its internal state. For better understanding, what is uh, the behavior? What is the internal state? For better understanding, please have a look at this image. See, suppose this is the client, right? And this is the context object. This context object having many internal states. Let's say state A, state B, state C, state D like this. And these are nothing but operations. Let's say operation A, operation B, operation C, and operation D. So whenever the client wants to use this context object, but this context object having some operations, right? And these operations are going to be depend on the state of the internal, uh, the internal state of this context object. Suppose the state is state A, then this operation, what the operation is going to perform this context object is operation A. Later, you change the internal state. The context object change from state A to state B. So when you change the state of this context object to state B, then what operation it is going to perform? It is going to perform operation B. That means this is the same context object, right? Context object is going to be same, but the internal state are going to be different. Sometimes it is state A, sometimes state B, sometimes state C. So whenever the state is A, you need to perform the operation A. Whenever state B, give me one minute, guys. Right. So based on the internal state, uh, different operations are going to be performed. Let us understand this uh, with one example, real time example. Right. So look at this ATM machine. This ATM machine having different states. One state is debit card not inserted. Another state is debit card inserted. Right. So this ATM machine, you can consider this is the context object. Right. On this context object, depending on the internal state, different kind of operations you can perform. You cannot perform all the operations on a specific state, on a specific state of the context object, right? For some state, you will going to perform some kind of operation. For other state, you will going to perform some other kind of operations. Let's assume the ATM state, uh, the internal state of this ATM is debit card not inserted. If the internal state is debit card not inserted, then what are the operations you can allow you are allowed to do, and what are the operations you are not allowed to do? Let have to do right. If the state is debit card not inserted, then what are the things you can do? You can insert the debit card. You cannot eject the debit card. As the debit card is not inserted, then what you are going to insert? You cannot enter the PIN number, right? Obviously, if the debit if you are not entering the uh, debit card, then the ATM will not allow to enter the PIN card. As you are not entering the debit card, pin card, so you cannot withdraw the money from the machine. So these are the things you can do and these are the things you cannot do, right? Let's assume that you enter the debit card. So whenever you enter the debit card onto the ATM machine, then the state is changed from not debit card not inserted to debit card inserted. That is the internal state is changes. When the internal state is changed, right, then what are the things you can do and what are the things you cannot do? First of all, same set of operation, but the implementation is going to be different. So with this state, you are going to do these operations, right? You can allow only insert a uh, debit card, but you are not allowed to do these things. But when the ATM state is changed to debit card inserted, then what are the things you can do? You cannot insert a debit card as the debit card is already installed. Right, you can eject the debit card, you can enter the pin number, and you can withdraw the money. Right, that means what now based on the internal state, the behavior is going to be changes. Right, so this is nothing but your state design pattern. According to state design pattern, the context object having different states. Right, now in this case, debit card not inserted, debit card inserted. Right, now if you read the definition, state design pattern allows an object. So this object is nothing but your context object. Uh, in our example, you can consider this is the ATM machine to alter its behavior. Uh, uh, to alter its behavior means what are the things you can do with a particular state? What are the things you cannot do with a particular state? 
right? That means it is going to change the behavior when its internal state changes. Internal state in this case is nothing but your debit card not inserted and the debit card inserted, right? So based on the internal state, different things you are going to perform. Clear, guys? Yes, sir. Okay. Now let us implement this example uh, step by step. And then I will show you the class diagram, right? Let me create one application with the name Strength Design Pattern. I'm making this as the startup project. Okay. So uh, as, as we want to maintain internal state, right? Uh, for, but for what? Now for the ATM card. So let us first create an interface where we need to define all the operations that are going to be performed on the state, right? So it might be, uh, uh, okay. So it is going to be an interface because we want to make our application loosely coupled. So whenever the term loosely coupled comes into the picture means we need to start with the interface. So inside this interface, we need to define the methods what all the concrete state classes would implement, right? So you can see as per our example, insert debit card is one operation, eject debit card is another option, enter pin is another option, or you can say operation, withdraw money is the last method, right? So these are the methods that we need to implement, right? So once you created the ATM card, uh, IATM state interface, now we need to implement the state interface. Con means what? We need to create the concrete state. So concrete state means the class, uh, it's going to be class, right? These are going to be classes. They should implement this interface and provide implementation for this method. But the implementation that is going to be specific to the state, right? If state A, if the state of the object is A, then I need to perform this operation. If state is B, then I need to perform these operations, right? So that is what you need to do, right? So we are going to create a two state object, right? So how many internal state you need to manage for, a, for the context object, that many number of a concrete state classes you need to create. So as for our example, how many internal states are there? Two internal state. One is debit card not inserted, another one is debit card inserted. That means two internal state means we need to create two concrete classes and those concrete classes would implement this IATM state interface and needs to provide the implementation of this method in their own way. Right. Let us implement this uh, uh, interface in two different classes. I'm going to create one class with the name debit card not inserted state.cs. And then I'm going to provide copy pasting this code and then I will explain the code. Okay. See? So this class implementing this state interface and this ATM card state uh, debit card not inserted, it is one of the state of the context object. And whenever the context object set to this state, then the, whenever uh, this state means these are the operation you are going to perform. What are the thing? Insert debit card. Yes, it is going to allow to insert the debit card, but it will not allow to eject the debit card. You cannot enter the pin number, right? and you cannot withdraw the money. So that means only this operation you can perform. And this operation, see, as it is implementing the interface, means uh, implementation you need to provide, but you need to give some information that this operation is not supported on this uh, uh, particular uh, uh, context object or ATM state, right? So next, what we need to do, we need to create another state object, right? Uh, what is that state object is debit card inserted state, right? Whenever the state of the context object is changed to debit card inserted state, then what are all operations you can perform that you need to define here? Again, it is going to implement the I interface, uh, I item state interface and needs to provide the implementation for all these four methods, right? And here you can see as uh, already the debit card inserted state means debit card is inserted. If inserted means it is not going to allow to insert the debit card because it is already inserted. You can eject the debit card, you can enter the pin, and you can withdraw the model. That means these are the four, uh, these are the operations you can perform. This operation you cannot perform with this particular state. And with this particular state, you can perform this operation and you cannot perform this operation, right? So this is the things we have done. 
Next one is we need to create the context object because this is the object which is going to maintain different state, right? And in our example, the context object is nothing but your ATM machine, which is having two states. One is a debit card not inserted and another one is a debit card inserted. So guys, remember, by default, the ATM machine state is going to be debit card not inserted. That is what we need to set within the constructor, right? Let me copy the code, then I will explain you the code. Again, uh, the po important point that you need to remember is this is also going to implement this state interface, right? As it is going to implement the state interface, so what it means, it is also going to provide implementation for all the uh, methods, right? All the methods means all the IATM state interface method. But what is important? Important thing is that the actual implementation is not going to be done inside this method. So you can see this insert debit card, the implementation is going to be different, right? And this is eject debit card, implementation is going to be different, but internally it is going to call the insert debit card method of the actual state object, right? Actual state object in the sense, uh, you can see this is one of the state object that is debit card not inserted, another state object is debit card uh, inserted state. So first of all, I'm creating one variable of this type, IATM interface type, and this variable is going to store the current state of the context object. Current state means either it might be debit card not inserted state or it might be debit card inserted state. That means the interface, uh, I'm not talking about this context object, I'm talking about the concrete state classes, right? The state classes which implement this IATM state interface. And in our example, which are the classes implement the IATM state interface? One is debit card inserted state, another is debit card not inter inserted state. That means the object reference of these two classes is going to store inside this variable. So whenever you go to the ATM machine, if you are not entering the debit card, right? Means what? The ATM machine is with not uh, uh, with debit card not inserted state. That means what you need to do within the constructor of this uh, class, right? What you need to do, you need to define this, right? You are setting that ATM machine state is debit card not inserted state, right? So this is the variable which we are uh, defining here, right? Now, now if you created the ACM machine, right? Then what are the operations you can call? You can call this insert debit card. You can call this eject debit card. You can call this enter pin and withdraw money. Right. Currently, the ATM machine state is debit card not inserted. Right. If the debit card not inserted uh, is this, then what are the operations you can call? You can see once you create this instance, you can call all these methods. But if you call this insert debit card method, then what is going to be happen? So happening means in this case, the ins uh, debit card is going to be inserted. Right. Currently, it is not inserted state. And once you call this insert debit card means what? Now, whenever you insert the debit card, this method is going to be called. Once this method is called, what is it is doing? Now it is calling the insert debit card method on this instance, right? Currently this state is this one, debit card not inserted. And it is calling this insert debit card method means the what is the current state? The current state is debit card not inserted state, right? Which is we initialized using the constructor. When we call this insert debit card method on this instance, means which is pointing to this class object, right? On that class object, this method is going to be called insert debit card. So if you go to the insert debit card, insert the, this method is going to be called and it is going to show you debit card inserted, right? So now you guys tell me if the debit card inserted, then we need to change the state of the debit, uh, we need to change the state of the ATM machine, right? To which state? To which state means to? This state, debit card, inserted state, right? So what I'm going to do uh, here, uh, what I'm going to do here is, I'm checking whether this instance is this one or not. Because see, if the instance is this one, debit card not inserted state, right? Then what I'm doing, I'm just changing the in uh, uh, state, right? Changing the state means what? I'm just initializing this reference variable with the debit card inserted state instance, right? That is what I'm doing here. And again, uh, what I'm, uh, for, uh, for better understanding, what I'm saying, the ATM machine internal state has changed to ATM machine that get type means it is going to return you the type of this fully qualified type. And then I'm just fetching the name of this type. Name means this class name, it is going to show you, right? So it is changed to this one. Uh, 
right? So now, and, and then uh, once the ATM machine state is changed, then you can call the interpin method, you can call the withdraw method, right? And, uh, and, and but, but whenever you call the inter, interpin method and you will see it is not going to do anything, rather it, what it is going to do based on the internal current internal state, right? What is the current internal state? Debit card inserted. So it is going to call that interpin method of a debit card inserted, right? And he will see pin number has been entered successfully, right? And again, if you call the withdraw money method, then it is going to execute this method, money has been withdrawn, right? And again, right, if you call the eject debit card, right, once you call the eject debit card, then what will happen? It is going to call the eject debit card method of the current state object. The current state object is debit card inserted. So on this uh, debit card inserted, it will going to execute this method. This method will show that debit card is ejected, right? Now, now you guys tell me, once the debit card is ejected, then what do we need to do? So once the debit card is ejected, then what do we need to do? We need to check if the debit card state is this one, because if the debit card is already in ejected state, then we do not need to eject again, right? So if the debit card state is this one, right? Instead of doing this uh, outside the class, it's better to do this here, right? Better to do this here means, uh, uh, first of all, check what is the current state, if the current state is inserted state, then only you are allowed to eject the debit card. And same in this case, right? If the current state is not inserted debit card, then you just uh, then you are allowed to insert the debit card. That is what I'm going to show you, right? So if the ATM machine state is inserted state, then only uh, you are allowed to eject the debit card. And once you eject the debit card, then what you need to do again, you need to change the state of the ATM machine. So for changing the state, this variable is going to hold the uh, current state. So current state is this one, then we need to change, sorry, current state is this one. So we need to change the state. So for that purpose, we are again going to initialize that variable with the debit card not inserted state, right? Now, now what is now once you execute this code, right? Once you call this eject debit card, means it is going to change the state of the um, ATM machine to debit card not inserted state, right? And then if you call the enter pin method, now or this enter pin method is going to execute from which class, guys? Debit card inserted or debit card not inserted class? Not inserted class not inserted class. And if you go to here, enter pin. So as the state is not inserted, right? You are not uh, inserted the debit card. Do you, uh, it will allow you to enter the pin number? No, it won't allow you. It will not allow you to enter the pin number, right? Now, if you call the withdraw money method, is it going to withdraw the money? No. no. You cannot withdraw the money. So, so basically what happened, now basically the internal state, right? Internal state of this ATM machine, you are allowed to perform certain operations and uh, whenever the state is A and whenever the state is changed to B, then you will allow to perform another set of operations. So that basically depends what are the operations you are allowed to do when state is A and what are the operations you are allowed to do whenever the state is changed to B, right? This is the use of state design pattern now. Or what we need to do, we need to modify the client code, right? So to test whether our application is working fine or not, right? So see, so uh, I'm creating an instance of an ATM machine. So whenever I'm creating an instance of an ATM machine, right? That means this public constructor parameterless constructor is going to be executed at this statement. So whenever this statement is executed, so what is the ATM machine current state? Can anybody tell me? <laughs> so uh, we, no debit card so, not inserted so, so it should be initial state so debit card not inserted state right so on debit card not interested state if you call this uh, uh, admin state dot uh, what is the object name get type dot name it is going to return you the type name type name means what is the class name that class name i'm printing here that is nothing but your state name right and then I'm calling this enter pin, withdraw money, eject debit card, and insert a debit card. See, whenever I'm calling these three methods, is it going to perform any operation? Can you enter the money, uh, enter the pin number when the ATM uh, card state is not inserted state? No. no. You can't insert it's also not possible. This is also not possible. 
but whenever you call this method right but in this case what will happen insert a bit card so once you call this method then what will happen see you just go and check so insert a debit card debit card inserted this method is executed and then what is doing insert debit card means it is just inserting the debit card and then it is changing the state of the debit card to debit card inserted state right once the debit card is inserted then you can check the current state it is going to show you debit card inserted state then it is going to allow to enter the money it is going to allow to withdraw the money do you think that it is going to allow to insert a debit card again this statement you are not allowed to do because already debit card is inserted then how you can insert a debit card again but it is going to allow to uh, withdraw the uh, sorry eject a debit card once you eject the debit card in this step again the chain again the state of the uh, atm machine will be changed to debit card not inserted state and that is what it is going to display here right now let me run the application See, the initially ATM machine current state is debit card not inserted state. So you cannot enter the pin as the no debit card in the ATM machine slot. You cannot withdraw money, right? Debit card inserted. Once the debit card inserted, that means what? Now ATM machine internal state has changed to debit card inserted state. ATM machine current state is debit card inserted state. Pin number has been entered successfully. Money has been ultra debit card ejected, right? Once the debit card is ejected, ATM machine internal state has changed to debit card not inserted state. And then it is showing ATM machine current state is debit card not inserted state. That means what? Now, based on the current internal state, right? If you want to change the behavior, right? Suppose uh, instead of writing multiple if else condition, if this is, then I need to perform this operation. If that is, I need to perform that operation, right? Instead of writing multiple conditional statements, right? Which is a very bad programming approach. It is always to better, it is always better to use this state design pattern whenever you need to perform different kind of operation based on the current internal state. If state is a then i need to perform this set of operations if state is changed to be then i need to perform this set of other operations so scenarios like this you need to use the state design pattern clear guys that's clear thank you sir yeah so now now if you look at the uh, class diagram i think no need to explain right so you you are having one state interface right in this case this state interface is nothing but this one which is going to define the set of operations that you are going to perform on the uh, state object, right? And here uh, you can have any number of a state, concrete state, right? A state, a concrete state A, concrete state B, concrete state C. In our example, these are nothing but uh, I'm working with these two state. Uh, if we, uh, it might be possible that in real time application you are having multiple state, right? Debit card not inserted and the debit card inserted, right? And then you are having one context object and in this case this context object is nothing but your atm machine right and this context object is going to use the state interface right so you can see this atm machine is using the state interface and whenever i'm saying it is using the state interface means you need to understand this interface along with the classes which implement this uh, this interface right and in this case debit card not inserted and the debit card inserted right and the client the client is going to use the atm machine right the client is only going to use the context class that sex that that is not showing here but the client is going to use this context class only clear guys yes sir clear okay so this is all about your state design pattern and if you want to learn more examples, right, then you can visit my website where I'm providing many uh, real-time examples where you need to learn the state design part. Next one, what we are going to discuss is template method design button, right? The state design button is a very useful one because uh, I personally like to use this state design button in a real-time application, right? A real-time application means you can consider the example of order right so whenever you are placing one order 
right? Uh, that order having many different steps, right? Many different steps means what? Now uh, the order, uh, suppose you are doing, placing one order, right? We, you are doing the payment, right? Pay payment might be going in the pending state. Payment might be go in the payment successful, payment failed, right? Whenever the payment is successful, I need to perform different set of operations. Whenever the payment is failed, then I need to perform some other kind of operations. Whenever the order is in pending state, right? Then I also need to do some different kind of operations, right? So if order is successful, then you need to do, 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 do this thing. When order is pending, you need to do this set of operations, right? Whenever the order is a, uh, cancelled, right? It might be possible that the user uh, placed an order, later he cancelled the order. That means the order state is moved to cancel. So if the order is cancelled, then I need to refund the money, right? If the order is failed, then I do not need to do the payment, right? If the order is pending, right, then I need to wait, wait when the order, uh, uh, I need to wait for some time to check what is the cost, when the status is going to be changed, right? And when the payment is, the order is successful, then I need to perform some other set of operations, right? So that is, uh, in my e-commerce application, I have used the state design button while we are placing the order to manage the different state of the order, right? Again, once the order is placed, then we need to uh, send that order to the client. And, uh, and again, in that case, uh, we need to change the order, whether the order is dispersed, whether the order is accepted by the client, right? So that's so basically, that's basically we are going to maintain different state of the order object, right? And for each particular state, we are going to perform some different kind of operations, right? And we can manage that very uh, easily by using the state design button. So, so basically, whenever you are one object and that object having many internal state, and based on the internal state, if you are going to perform some different kind of operations, then in that case, you need to use the state design button, right? So another example, you can take the vending machine, right? So whenever you are working, uh, if you are going to vending machine, then it will not allow to dispatch the product and enter the money, right? First of all, you need to select the product, right? Once you select the product, then you need to enter the money. Right, that means first product is not selected. If the product is not selected, then it will not allow to disperse the product. It will not allow to enter the money, right? Once you select the product, that means product uh, the state of the product is changed from not selected to selected, right? Once you select the product, then it will allow you to enter the money. Once you enter the money, right, then it will give you the product. And again, it will give you the um, balance money if, if anything, if any, if balance money is there, right? So that means what now based on the current state, you are allowed to perform certain set of operations. And whenever the state is changed, then you are allowed to perform again a different set of operations. So this, this state design button is a, one of the frequently used, I can say, uh, people are not using because uh, uh, implementing is very difficult. But once you start implementing, it is going to be uh, what I can say, it is going to be a game changer, right? So it is going to completely change the structure of your application, right? You can easily implement, you can easily manage the feature changes, right? Today, there are a few states. Again, new st uh, one of the uh, new states come into the picture tomorrow. You can easily you just create a class, inherit from that interface, implement the operation according to the business requirement. That's it. So this is going to be one of the most used design pattern in real-time application. The next design button, what we are going to discuss is template method design button, right? Usually this design button is not that important, but uh, uh, if you know this design button, again, it's a very good thing, right? Because it is somehow similar to the facade design button, right? Let me explain this design button uh, one by one. Okay, so let us, give me one minute, guys.
Okay. Now, uh, am I audible to you guys? Yes, sir. Okay, there is some internet uh, so okay, fine. So now let us start discussing this template method design pattern. What is template method design pattern according to Gang of Four? Right, see, template method design pattern defines a sequence of steps of an algorithm and allows the subclasses to override the steps but not allowed to change the steps. Right, so that means what? Now we are having one interface. That interface having some method. Right, that methods. Uh, are going to be implemented by the child classes, but the, what is the sequence of executing those methods that is not going to be decided by the child classes, rather that is going to be defined by the template classes. So in the template class uh, or in the parent interface uh, or in the parent after class, we will one method, that method is going to be the template method. That template method is going to decide what is the sequence of the algorithm to execute. How uh, and that oh, so defining the sequence of algorithm to execute means uh, it, uh, it is going to define some methods that methods are going to be implemented by the child classes. But what is the order of execution of those methods that is going to be defined by the template class? That is nothing but your template design button. Let us understand this definition with the one example, right? Suppose you want to build a concrete house, then you need to follow a sequence of steps, right? What is the step? First, you need to build the foundation, then you need to build the pillar, then you need to build the walls, and then you need to build the windows, right? And so it is not possible that you can start, uh, uh, you will start building the walls first, window first. So if there is no foundation, no pillars, then what, how you can use this? That means the sequence should be in this way. First foundation, then pillar, then walls, and then windows, right? And once you follow these four steps, then you can create a concrete house, right? Now, now what do you need to do? You need to build a wooden house, right? Then again, you need to follow the same uh, steps, right? So foundation, pillars, walls, windows, and wooden house is there. So what is the difference? The difference here is instead of using concrete, right? So in this case, you are using concrete to build the concrete house, and here you are using wooden wood to build the wooden house. So what uh, th that means what? Now the steps are going to be same. But the material is going to be different. So what you can do here is you can define one template method. Let's say build a house. Okay, let's call that template method is build a house. The template method will define uh, the template method will define what all the steps, right? That is step one, right? So in this case, you can see this is the your uh, steps. This is the concrete house. This is the wooden house. But what is the order of these methods to be executed? That is also going to be defined by the abstract class, right? That means this template method, you can see it is having one, uh, um, first it will call the build foundation, build pillars, build walls, build concrete, right? Then this template uh, abstract class, right, is going to be implemented by this concrete house, going to be implemented by this wooden house. So this concrete house will implement these four methods and provide implementation to build a concrete house. And this wooden house, it is going to be a concrete class. This concrete class is going to implement these four methods, right? And going to provide implementation to build the wooden house. But the sequence of executing these methods is not going to be decided by this concrete house or it is not going to be decided by this wooden house. Rather, this abstract class, this template abstract class will define this template method. And this method is going to be a concrete method. And this method will define the sequence of the methods to be called, right? So this, this is nothing but your template method design pattern, right? And now if you read the definition, template method design pattern defines a sequence of steps, right? So in this case, the sequence of steps are this one. Build foundation, build pillars, building walls, and building windows, right? Defines a sequence of steps of an algorithm, means of one problem, allows the subclasses to override these steps, right? These steps means these methods are declared as abstract here. That means the subclass is going to provide implementation for this abstract method. And the last point is, but is not allowed to change the sequence, right? That means you are going to implement these methods, no doubt about it. But the order of execution, you cannot decide. As a concrete class, you cannot decide the order of execution. That is going to be decided by me. This template method will decide the order of the sequence of this method execution. 
the implementation is going to be in the concrete classes or subclasses, but the sequence of execution is going to be divided, decided by this template in the part. Right? Let us implement this design pattern. And this is not that difficult. It's a very straightforward design pattern. Let me implement this one. I'm creating a class file with the name template with a design pattern. So this is my template class, or you can say abstract template class, which is going to contain, right? Which is going to contain the template method. Create a class file with the name house template.cs and then copy paste the following code. Right. See, I'm creating this as a public method so that from outside the class, you can call this method. And I'm making these methods as protected. Protected means the subclass is going to implement this method, but from outside the subclass, you cannot call this method. Protected means only available to the child classes. See, these are the methods, right? These are the methods that is going to be implemented by the subclasses. But what is the order of the execution of this method is not going to be decided. That is going to be decided by your template method, right? In the template method, you can see this template method will house, will define the sequence of execution of the method. First, you need to call this method. Then it is calling the second method. Then it is calling the third method. And then it is calling the fourth method, right? And this is the template method of our application. Now, what we need to do? We need to create a two concrete uh, 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 right uh, houses. So one, uh, two concrete templates. One is, you can say concrete house. Another one is wooden house. So I'm going to create a concrete house. So this concrete house implementation is very straightforward. What he is going to do? He is going to override the abstract method which are defined inside this class, right? So protected, abstract, build foundation, build pillar, build walls, build window. So these four methods, you can say it is going to override. Build foundation, build builder, build walls and build windows so that the implementation is done, right? Now what we need to, but here you can see it is overriding all the method, but it is not touching this build house method. So you are providing, you are uh, doing these things, but uh, the sequence or the execution of this method is not decided by you or not decided by the, uh, from anyone outside of this class because these methods are protected. Protected means they are only available to the child classes. And for, the, for now, this is the class and this concrete class doesn't have any child class. That means no one is going to use this method except this template method, right? Now the template method will decide the sequence of execution of this method. Now we need to create another uh, house, right? wooden house, you can clear, create also a glass house, right? So, so basically as per your requirement, you can uh, create number of uh, concrete classes. So this is going to be same as the previous one. It is just implementing the, uh, uh, it is just overriding the abstract method. See, in this case, it is also inheriting from a house template overriding this for method, right? But, but the sequence of execution, again, it is going to be decided by the build house template method, right? So that's it. Uh, now, what do we need to do? We need to use this method inside the program class, right? Let me go to the program class. I'm creating an instance of a, a concrete house, right? So it is an abstract class. You cannot create an instance. You can store the child class instance inside this parent class reference variable, right? So here, house template is the parent class. And I want to create a new concrete house, okay? Create an instance, then call this build house. Now, once you call this build house, Right, so the so it will go to where it will go to the implementation. Right, it is going to this implementation, and from this implementation means it is going to call this four method, and it is going to call this four methods. Right, means from which or class. So the class object which you stored inside this variable, which class object we store, we store the concrete class object. Right, so from here it is go to the concrete house to call this method then it will, for this method call, it is go to the concrete house, call the second method and so on, right? And then uh, again, what I'm doing, I'm creating a wooden house and storing that reference where uh, object reference inside this variable and calling the build house method. Whenever I call the build house method, again, the controller will come to here. And now it is going to execute the method from which class? The class object, what you stored inside this reference variable. And I'm currently storing the wooden house reference variable 
So from here, it is going to execute these four methods in this sequence, right? From this wooden house class, right? Now, if you run the application, then you will see the output as expected. It's, it's a very simple design pattern, right? Uh, it's very similar to the facade, uh, but here uh, you are having different implementation, right? So uh, you can see building a concrete house, house is built, building a wooden house, and these are the methods from the wooden house is going to be executed, and it is important, right? The sequence, the sequence is going to be decided by the template method. The method implementation is going, uh, going to be decided uh, how the method is going to be implemented. That is going to be decided by the child classes. But uh, what is the sequence of execution that is going to be decided by your template method? This is nothing but your template method design part. Now, if you look at the uh, diagram, then the client is going to use this abstract template class and this abstract template class having the template method and this template method you can see this is the abstract class but this is a concrete method and this method uh, and this abstract class having some steps right and these steps are going to be implemented by the concrete classes you can see concrete class a implementing these three methods concrete class b implementing these three methods but the order of execution of these three method is going to be decided by this template class in our example this is the house template abstract class and these are nothing but your concrete house and wooden house concrete classes and the client is going to use this abstract class so whenever i'm saying using abstract class means you need to understand abstract class it is the base class but uh, you have to use any of the child classes that implement the abstract class and in this case you can see i'm using the abstract abstract class but i'm creating instance of the child classes and in this case this is concrete class a concrete class b is nothing but your concrete house and the wooden house clear guys or anybody having any uh, question Right. Now, if someone asks you when to use template method design pattern, then you need to tell, see, if we are de defining one abstract class and if that abstract class having many uh, uh, abstract method and those abstract methods should be executed in a proper order, right? Then we need to use this uh, template method design pattern. In the abstract class, we need to define the template method and that template method is going to design the sequence of the execution of the method from the child classes. So we should not give that, uh, uh, we should not give that uh, uh, flexibility to the child classes to decide the order of execution of the method, right? That should be handled by the parent abstract class. So in that case, we will make this template method as the public method and the rest of the method as overridable method. See, in this case, if you are thinking, so this is the house template, right? And this is the concrete house. So here you are creating this concrete house, a house template. So can you call this four methods from uh, from the program class? Build foundation, build builder, build walls and build windows. Is it possible to call these methods from here? Any Anybody, I mean, can I call this a uh, uh, build foundation method from the program class? Is it possible? Guys, see, intelligence only showing this build house. The intelligence, is it showing the other methods? Build foundation, build filler, build walls, and build windows. Guys, why it is not showing? Can anybody tell me? Guys, are you getting this or not? Everyone is silent. Am I audible to all of you guys? Yes, sir. Then why you guys are not saying a single word? Okay, fine. The next uh, what I'm going to discuss is command design pattern. See, I'm asking you guys, you are not giving me answer. 
so whenever you guys going to ask me question i am also not going to give you answer if you are silent when i am asking the question then i will be silent when you guys are going to ask me the question that simple this is the simple fundamental logic okay what is common design pattern okay according to gango for definition common design pattern is used to encapsulate a request as an object right and that is nothing but a command and pass it to the invoker wherein the invoker does not know how to serve the request but uses the encapsulated command to perform an action right this is the definition as per gango for but but this definition it's uh, quite difficult to understand right let us understand this difficult definition with one example now to understand the uh, command design button uh, look at this image right so what this image is all about it is nothing but the client sending one command right what this command is the command object right so as we are learning command design button so first of all we need to understand what is this command so command it's nothing but one object and this command object having three things three things means request uh, request is nothing but the uh, the command command means what you want to do the receiver object reference receiver object reference is nothing but the actual object right which can handle the request and this execute method means this execute method is nothing but it is going to call the receiver object method right which is going to handle the request right so so the thing that you need to re remember is so as for the command design button the command object right the command design button the command object will be passed to the invoker right so let me explain to you these things so diagram right command so command is contains three things the request receiver object and execute method right request object means the command right this command uh, receiver object means the actual object which handle the request the actual object which is going to handle the uh, request this execute method means internally it is going to call the receiver object method see so this command object it, it cannot directly communicate with the uh, uh, with this receiver object Guys, give me one minute. Right. So, so you can say command request. Request means say uh, you want to uh, do some task, right? Uh, the command, or you can say some task, some task to do, some task to do. But this task, what this command object wants to perform, it has to perform on the receiver object, right? So the receiver object, but this command object cannot access or communicate with the receiver object directly. So what is to, so this request, this command object, he passed the client. So you can say the client, right? The client pass this command object to someone else. That someone else in this case is not the invoker, right? So I'm talking uh, this, uh, the person is nothing but your invoker. Invoker receives the command object. Receives the 
command object, right? The client sends the command object to the receiver. Receiver receives the uh, command object, but receiver does not know how to handle this request. Does not know how to handle the request. So he does not have that flexibility uh, and he cannot handle that request, right? Does not know how to handle the request. What he has to do, he has to call the execute method of the command object. So, so the client sent the command to the invoker and whenever the client send the command, that command contains three information. What is the request object? That is what task you want to do. And the receiver object, who is going to perform the, uh, or who is going to actually handle the request and one execute method. And this execute method actually internally call the receiver object because I want to perform the task. So this execute method internally going to call this receiver object uh, method to handle the request, right? And this command, it passed to the invoker, right? The invoker receives the command object. It receives the command object, that file. This receiver does not know how to handle the request. This request, what the client asked for, he cannot handle. So what he will do, he will call this execute method, right? This execute method of which object? Command object. It receives the command object. So one object, one method. So it can easily call that method. So it call the execute method of the command object. So when it call the execute method of the command object, say internally what he will do. So internally it will call the, internally it will call the receiver object method, right? So internally it will call the receiver object method, right? So once it internally called the receiver object method, the task is going to be handled and it will return the response to the invoker and the invoker will return the response to the client. So this is how the command design button works. Now, if you uh, now if we uh, if we want to understand this uh, example better, we need to understand one real time example, right? So this is what you can see. Uh, this is our command object, the client uh, having this command object and the client send this command object to the invoker. The invoker receives this command object and the invoker will not, uh, uh, the invoker does not have any idea how to handle this uh, uh, request rather. What this invoker will do is it will call this execute method of the command object. Right. Once it calls the execute method of the command object, whoever the receiver, it is going to call that receiver object method to do the actual task. Right. And if this is not clear at the moment, don't worry. Once we discuss the real time example, then you will understand this very well. Right. So uh, to make you understand what we are going to do, we are going to use the command. Give me one minute, guys. So to make you understand the command design button, uh, let us take the example of a restaurant, right? In a restaurant, the waiter will be there. What that waiter will do is, the waiter will take the order from the customer, right? The waiter will do uh, uh, take the order from the customer. The customer will tell the waiter what kind of foods or what food he or she wants. The waiter will take a note on it, and or you can say take a checklist, and then the waiter will pass the checklist to the cook. The cook is the one who will prepare the food and give it back to the waiter and the waiter will give it back to the customer. So in this example, the customer is the client, right? Customer ordering some food means customer is the client. Order, order means what kind of a food he wants. That order is nothing but your command. The waiter, waiter is nothing but your invoker. The waiter does not know how to cook the food, but what is the customer want? Customer wants some food, but waiter cannot prepare the food, na? 
So the waiter is the invoker. The waiter does not know how to cook the food. So the waiter just passes the request to the receiver, right? So the waiter just passes the request to the receiver by calling this execute method, right? The receiver is nothing but your cook who will prepare the food, given it back to the waiter. The waiter will given it back to the customer. So in this example, customer is the client, order is the command, waiter is the invoker, receiver is nothing but your cook, right? So now if you compare this client, it is nothing but your customer, customer, right? This command is nothing but order food, right? Invoker is nothing but your waiter. And this receiver, right? This receiver object, it is nothing but your, right? So customer is there who will uh, uh, having this command object, right? He is asking the waiter to uh, prepare the board, right? Give me this board, but the waiter is not the one who is going to prepare the board. So he will transfer that request to the receiver. Receiver in this case, example, cook. The cook will prepare the food, given it back to the uh, waiter, waiter will give it back to the client. So this is one of the best example to understand the command design part, right? Let us understand this with one real time example, right? So let me properly set this one. Okay, so now uh, we are going to implement one real time example, right? So here you can see we are having three commands. The first one is open command, right? It has the request to open the document, right? The receiver object in this case, the receiver object is nothing but the document, right? This receiver object on the right hand side, you can see this is the document or in the, if you compare with our example, it is nothing but your cook. Right. This is the receiver object and this receiver object having three methods. Open the document, save the document, close the document. But the client does not have direct access to this receiver object. Right. The client does not have direct access to this receiver object. So what the client will do is the client will prepare three commands. One is open command to open the document, save command to save the document, close command to close the document. And whenever the client preparing the document, he is mentioning the request. Request means open the document, right? And for save command, the request is save the document. For a close command, the request is close the document, right? And the second one is document. Uh, the second uh, thing that what it is going to contain is receiver object reference. So which one is the receiver object in this case document? So this open command or this save command or this close command, it should have the document object reference because document is the receiver object. This document object or the receiver object is the actual object which is going to handle the request, right? And then this command having this execute method, you can say all these three commands whether it is open command, save command, close command, they, they are having this execute method. What this execute method will do internally is it is going to call any of the method of the document object, right? As per the requirement, if open command, then it is going to call the open method of the document object. If save command, it is going to call the same method on the document object. And for close command, it is going to call the close method of the document object. And this is the request the uh, client will send this request to the invoker. Invoker means in this case, you can consider some kind of a menu options, right? So what is the operation you want to perform? That what we are going to show as a menu, open, save, and close, right? Whenever the invoker click on this open command, means this command is going to be executed. As part of this command, what exactly it is going to do? It is going to execute this execute method. It is going to call this execute method. So as part of this execute method, it is going to call the open method on the receiver object, right? What is the open method uh, of the receiver object means the receiver object is nothing but the document object, document dot open method is going to be called. Similarly, in the case of save and similarly in the case of a close button right so now we are going to implement this application step by step and then i will show you the uml diagram so create a new project with a name command design button okay let me close this one close all documents command design button let me make this a startup project Okay, so first of all, you need the receiver object, right? So first of all, you need the receiver object 
which will actually going to handle the request. So in our example, the receiver object is nothing but your document, which is having this three method. So let's create a class file with the name document.cs. This is going to be my receiver object, which is going to handle the actual uh, request, right? So create a class file, then copy paste this code. So very simple, I'm just creating the class and uh, having this open shape and a closed method, right? So this is going to be the receiver object which is going to handle the request, right? Any kind of operation you want to perform that you want the client to perform, then those operations needs to be defined in this class. Open shape and a closed method. The next is we need to create the command, right? So we need to create the command object means uh, this is the command. This command object should have in these three information, right? So let us create one interface with the name i command.cs. Right? This is the command which is going to be used by the invoker, right? The command object is going to be used by the invoker means there is one method called execute method, and that method is going to be executed by the invoker because the uh, uh, from the command method, if you look at this invoker class, right, waiter class, he is only going to execute this, you call this execute method. So as part of this I command interface, we need to define that execute method, right? So it declares a method for executing a command, right? Whatever the, if you look at this, uh, this command you are sending to the, uh, to whom you are sending to the invoker. Out of these three things, which method is going to be executed by the invoker object? Only this execute method. Internally, what he is going to do? Internally, what the role of or responsibility of this execute method means? It is going to call the receiver object method. That what we are going to discuss later. But for now, we need to define this execute method as part of our command object, right? So we have execute. We have this execute method, right? Now what we need to do? We are going to create different types of a command. As for our requirement, how many types of a command we need to create? One is open command, one is save command, one is close command. So let us create, implement this interface in three different classes. One is open command, one is close command, and another one is save command, right? Let me create a class file, open command, right? So this is the command. And as per our requirement, this class should contains at least three informations. What are the information? First of all, it should implement the I command interface and it should have, right? It should have the receiver object reference, right? Receiver object reference. And in our example, which one is the receiver object? This is the receiver object. That means it should have a reference to the document class. So for that purpose, I'm creating this document. And I'm initializing that document using the constructor, right? So, so basically I have directly created one class. If you want to create one interface and if you want that interface and then implement that, then that is also fine. In that case, you need to create I document, right? Uh, for, a, for, for example, uh, what I'm going to do public interface I document, right? So what I'm doing here, I'm creating I document. I'm making this void open method, void save method, and void close method, right? So you can also create like this, right? Void close method. And then you need to inherit from this I document interface. I document interface, right? And here you can use that I document as a reference variable. And here you can use I document as a reference variable, right? So you are having the reference object and you are initializing that reference object and you are having this execute method, right? This execute method means this is the execute method. What is the role of this execute method? Internally, it is going to call the receiver object method, right? So as which command is this open command and open command means internally this execute method going to call which method of the receiver object guys tell me the receiver object having open method save method and close command 
right so as this is the open command it should go and call the open method of the document object or the receiver object and that is what i am going to show you i am showing here document dot open method clear guys yes sir clear now now we need to create two more commands what are this one is save command and another one is close command the implementation going to be safe, right? The save command, it is going to execute the uh, the save command. It is also going to implement the I command interface as part of that I command interface. We are to declare the execute method. So we need to provide implementation for this execute method. So it's better to use I document because we have made that as an interface, right? And then I'm having this execute method. What this execute method is going to do, it is going to call the save method of the document Clear. So the reference, it is the object reference, right? Receiver object reference, initializing that receiver object reference to constructor. And as part of the execute method, we are calling the receiver object method. That is what. So the command object, that is the command request, should have the receiver object reference and it should have the execute method. Internally, this execute method going to call the receiver object method. So as for our uh, the intention, we are defining this. So this is the request means command to do some task. So that do some task means the same command and the role of this save command to save the command, uh, save command to save the document. And this open command means to open the document and this the task of the save command to save the document. And the last one is close command, right? Close command means if you want to close the document, then you need to use this close command, right? So I'm creating the class file. Again, the implementation is going to be same, right? So I'm not going to explain this class code because it's very much similar to the previous two classes, right? Simply inside this execute method, it is going to call the close method of the receiver object. Receiver in this case, document, document object close method it is calling. So we have created the command, right? So we have created the command and we have created the task. What are the tasks to be done, right? Next, what we need to do, we need to create the waiter. Uh, sorry, we need to create the invoker, right? So for that purpose, what I'm going to do in this case, right? In this case, invoker is nothing but our menu options, right? So if you look at our example, so we have this uh, three command we have created. We have created open command, save command and close command. Uh, and now what we need to do, we are going to create the invoker object. That is the menu options, right? So menu options, and uh, let me create the class and show you the code. So menu options.cs, create a class file with the name menu options.cs. This is nothing but your invoker. And this invoker is going to use the command object and to perform the different operations, right? Okay. So this is the menu options. And here I have created three command variable, right? Uh, uh, if you see, this is the I command, this is the uh, interface or base interface. I command, open command, save command, and a close command. And then uh, uh, using the constructor of this class, I'm initializing these three commands, right? Open command, save command, and the close command, right? So this open command means you will send an instance of the open command, right? Save command means you will say, uh, create an instance of same command and send. Close command means you need to create an instance of close command and send that to this constructor, right? And again, as you can, uh, if you look at our example, right, it is having three options, right? Three options means in, in the menu, we are going to show open, save, and close, right? So for that purpose, what I'm going to do, I'm creating three methods. Click open, click save, and click close. But, but internally, this click open, calling the open command dot execute method. Click save means click command dot execute method. Uh, and click close means uh, close command dot execute method. So what exactly this? This means uh, whenever you are going to create uh, the instance, so before creating the instance, you need to create three instances of the command, right? So the client wants to use this open command. Okay. Give me one minute.
okay so you can see this is the open command so while i'm sending so this is the invoker invoker means the client will call this invoker right the client while creating an object of this invoker the client need to pass the command object right so if you see the invoker it receives the command object that means the client will create the instance of command object and the client will pass the command object instance to the invoker so in this case, the client is nothing but our main method of the program class. The program class will create an instance of open command, save command, and close command. And when creating the uh, when uh, and then those instances it needs to pass to the invoker. That means while creating an instance of menu option class, the client needs to pass these three instances via the constructor. And then whenever the user right, whenever the uh, waiter wants to perform some operations right now the waiter having this three method this menu option means this is the invoker invoker having this click open click save and click close buttons right now if you want to perform the open operations right so if you want to perform the open operation then the invoker has to call this open method right so what is the open method will do is it is going to execute the uh, it is going to call the execute method on the open command object what object you stored inside this uh, open variable right while while creating the instance of this class whatever the first object you pass that is going to store inside this variable and that execute method from that class is going to call right let me show you this practically so invoker is done now we need to use right so from the client code i'm going to show you right this is my client code right so I'm creating the document uh, means the receiver object because the command what I'm going to pass it is going to be have the receiver object. So this is my receiver object right and it is also while passing the request to the invoker right while I'm passing this command it is having the receiver object and the request request means the command right and the command means I have to create the open command save command and close command. And if you see this open command, slave command, and close command, right? While creating the instance, I need to pass the receiver object, right? So what is the receiver object document? I'm passing the document to this, to this, and to this. So I have created the command object, which contains the receiver object. And I have created the command object to perform different operations. This open command will perform the uh, uh, open uh, the document operation. Save command means it is going to save the document. And this close command, it is going to close the document, right? So we have the receiver object. We have the command object. Now, what is the role of the client? The client needs to pass this command object to the invoker. So for passing the command object to the invoker, he has to create an instance of this menu option class. So while creating the invoker instance, right, he needs to pass the command object because if I'm not passing the command object in what operation the, uh, uh, see, you know, as a client, I need to give the order to the waiter. If I'm not giving order, uh, then what the uh, waiter will do? He will not do anything. So in this case, while creating an instance of an invoker, I need to pass the open command, save command, and close command. So whatever operation you want to perform. See menu option, first one is open command, second one is accept command, third one is close command, right? So once the invoker is ready, right, then we can the invoker. So this is the invoker. The in, invoker take the order from the client, then he needs to pass that order, right? The waiter will need to pass the order to the receiver, receiver in the cook. So cook in this case is nothing but document. How it is going to pass? Because he doesn't know how to handle. So he simply click on this block, click open method, click save method, or click close method. So this click open method, right? On this menu option class, it is going to open the document by click by calling this open uh, commanded execute method. If you see this execute method is part of the command object, right? So whenever and you can see whatever the command object we pass, suppose in this case, click open command, that open command is stored inside this open command variable, open command variable dot execute method, save command variable dot execute method, close command dot execute method. So the client, so the receiver needs to only call the execute method because he does not know how to handle the request. So he just needs to call this execute method. Now, if you go to the implementation, then which command is this? This is the click open. So it is going to this part and it is going to open the document, right?
So again, it will come to this open document and again, it is going to the implementation. That is the document is going to be open, right? So now if you run the application, then you will understand the output. That document is going to be open, saved and then closed. Document open, document saved and the document closed. Any question from anyone? No question, sir. Thank you. Anybody having any, any anyone, anyone having any more questions? No question, sir. Okay, so once you go through the document and once you debug the application, then you will understand better, right? So in our example, what are the different component? We are having the invoker, which is going to call the execute method of the command object. The command object having this execute method. And if you see, this is the command object having the execute method. The invoker is going to call the execute method. The invoker is going to call the execute method. And this command, it is an interface. So the concrete command is going to implement, right? So you can see this is the open command, shaped command and close command. These are the concrete method which implements the, this command. And the client wants to perform some action on the receiver object, right? The client is nothing but the program class and the receiver is nothing but our uh, document class, right? and this document class, but it is going to perform the operation via the command, right? The client is not going to use this option, but rather via it will going to use the concrete command. From the concrete command, it is going to execute the receiver object, right? So this is how, so this is the wrong diagram. You have to remove this one. This is not possible. The client is not going to use this receiver. Right? Yes, it is going to create an instance of the receiver object. That, yeah, that is not wrong. It is fine because the client is going to create an instance of the receiver object, right? But but, but performing the action, it is using the command object. You can see. And once it goes to the command object, command object internally going to do the task, right? That is going to be handled. So the next design pattern, what we are going to discuss is visitor design pattern. Okay. According to Gangopur definition, the visitor design pattern, in the visitor design pattern, we use a visitor object, which changes the executing algorithm of an element object. In this way, when the visitor varies, the execution algorithm of the object can also vary, right? So in this case, this element object means it might be a collection, right? So you can have array list, array list means you are having list of elements. See, in this for, for better understanding, you look at this. So this is my object structure or collection, or you can say it might be array list, array list, dictionary, any hash table, hash collection, any anything, any collection. So let's assume that object structure contains some elements, element one, element two, element three, element four. Now, according to visitor design button, the visitor will visit the object structure and perform some operation. And each visitor is going to perform some different kind of operation. Visitor will one, uh, visitor one will visit this object structure and he is going to perform some operation. Visitor will, will visit to these elements and he is going to perform a different operation. And visitor three is going to perform a different operation. But the operation, what is going to be defined, that should be in so natural or so generic that each visitor is going to perform a different set of operations, right? For visitor one, operation one is going to be performed on this element. For visitor two, operation two is uh, uh, going to be performed on this element. That means whenever the visitor varies, the operation is also going to be varied, right? Let us understand this with one uh, real time example, right? Suppose, so in our example, uh, there is a school. So the school is nothing but your uh, object structure, which contains collection of students, or you can say collection of kids. So it's a place school. So you can, instead of saying student, it's better to say kids, right? So our ob object structure contains collection of kids. And this object structure, it, it is nothing but the school. And here, the element is nothing but the, the kid. Kid is the element, and the object structure is the school, right? Now, uh, the school management one day decided, let's do a health checkup of all our students, right? So what they do, they appoint one child specialist doctor and the child specialist doctor will visit the school, that is visit the object structure and they do a health checkup of each individual kids and give the report cut the school management, 
right? That means here this visit the doctor is nothing but the visitor who visit the object structure, nothing but the collection of students and perform some kind of operations, right? Now, now in the same manner, what is happening? Now, one uh, company, uh, one uh, school bag sales company uh, communicate with the school management and says that I want to visit my, my company wants to visit your school and my company wants to give a, uh, give a school bag as a gift to each of the students, right? Or to each of the kid. And the school management agree and then the company sell, uh, send one visitor or you can say one salesman to the school right the school is nothing but the object structure and the this salesman visit the school and give a one one back to each of the kids that means whenever the doctor visit the doctor performing some set of operation on the same data structure or same object structure whenever the salesman visit it is also going to perform some upper, uh, it is going to perform the operation on the same set of uh, elements or you can say on the same data structure, but a different operation, right? The operation of a doctor and the operation of a salesman is going to be different. How we can implement this, right? The method we need to define in the uh, structure, object structure only, but that method is going to be do some different kind of operations whenever the visitor change. If the visitor is visitor one, it is going to perform operation one. And whenever the visitor is visitor two, it is going to perform operation two, right? How we can implement this? We can implement this very easily by using visitor design part. Wherever a visitor is going to perform a different operation, visitor one performing operation one, visitor two performing operation two. So in this case, salesman giving a gift to, uh, giving a gift as a school bag to each kid. Wherever the, wherever the operation of the doctor, it is going to do a health checkup of the, each student. That means the operations are going to be varied based on the visitor. And this is one of the best example of visitor design pattern. Let us implement this design pattern step by step. Great. Uh, let us create one pro uh, project with the name visitor, dot, visitor design pattern. Right. So first of all, we need to create uh, one element class, i element.cs. This class having one method, and this method is going to be used by the visitor. Each of the individual visitor will call this method, right? So i element. So each individual visitor is going to implement this feature. So here I'm using i visitor. That is, uh, after some time, I'm going to create uh, or implement this i visitor interface so don't worry about this uh, compilation error so this is my visitor interface right uh, sorry this is my element interface element interface and then what we need to do we need to create the concrete element so in our example the concrete element is nothing but the kid kid means these students are nothing but your concrete element so create a class file with the name kid.cs and then implement this one. So we need to create one class file with the name kid.cs. So this is the class file. Let me implement this one. So here you can see I'm creating one property to hold the kid name, initializing that property using the constructor of the kid. And this kid, uh, this uh, kid class implements the I element interface that means it is providing implementation to this uh, accept method. And this visit method means it is going to be implemented uh, later, right? So you can see I'm taking this I visitor interface and uh, uh, calling this visit method. That means uh, if I'm creating a kid and if you, I want that kid to be visited by someone else who wants to visit that instance, I need to pass to this method. And then that I visitor instance having this visit method and whenever I call that, that that particular kid is visited by that particular visitor, right? So uh, right now you are having some question, right? Don't worry, once we implement this I visitor interface, you will get some idea, right? Let us implement the I visitor. So I visitor means who are the visitor, the, who are the visitor wants to visit the school, right? This is nothing but your visitor, right? Let me create an interface. And let me create one. Uh, and uh, if you look at this image, right? If you look, so this I visitor having this visit method. That means within the I visitor interface, I need to define one method called visit, right? And this is the visit method which we use to visit all the 
kids of the school, right? So you can see this is the visit interface. Next, what we need to do? We need to create two concrete visitors. What are the visitor? One is doctor, right? Doctor wants to visit all the elements of the school and do a health checkup, right? So let me create doctor.cs. Let me copy paste the code. Right. So here you can see I'm storing the doctor name. Uh, this property is going to store the doctor name, initializing that property using the constructor. And then uh, if you see this is having the visit method, I'm implementing that visit method. And here what I'm doing, so whenever it visit a particular student, right, that student uh, information, it is going to print on the uh, console, right, a doctor, whoever the doctor, and it did a health checkup of the child, whatever the child element that you need to pass, and that name it is going to print in the console, right? The doctor visit the child, right? So how to visit all the childs? That is going to be decided by the object structure, right? Later we will see that part. Now we need to create another visitor, uh, and that name is going to be salesman, right? So salesman, its job is to give a gift uh, as a school bag to all the kids of the school. Let me copy paste the code and the implementation is going to be same. Same in the sense, you can see this is the salesman name. I'm initializing that salesman. And this is the same visit method because it is also implementing the iVisitor interface, which is used by the kid classes, right? Or element classes, right? This is the iVisitor. So it is also implementing the visit method. And this is also going to print this message. Salesman, whatever the name, give a school back to the child, whatever the child name. So in this case, we have implemented the um, kid. We have implemented the kid. So we have implemented two things. One is kid and one is visitor. So kid is means it is having one accept method. And this accept method calling the visitor object visit method. And we have created two visitor. One is doctor. This is having the visit method. Salesman, it is also having the visit method, right? So next, what we need to do, and if you look at this diagram, right? We have created the kid class or the element. We have created the salesman and we have created the doctor. Now what we need to do, we need to create the object structure. Object structure means collection of a student, right? Let me create the object structure. So object structure means this is nothing but the important uh, part of our visitor design pattern. So in our example, object structure, it's nothing but you can say school. So I'm creating a class file with the name school.cs and then I'm copy pasting this. School. So this school means it is having lots of kids or lost or lots of students, right? So you can see I'm having one elements. This is a collection property and I'm initializing that collection property using the constructor of this. So this collection property is nothing but your list of a student. So any number of a student you want, you can uh, get the data from the database. But from here, I'm just a hard coded few student names, right? These are the student who was uh, studying in the school, right? So we are having this uh, element collection. Now what I need to do, I need to perform the operations, right? Perform the operation means if one visitor come, then he wants to visit all the students and he wants to do some operations over the, uh, over the students, right? For that purpose, this is the important method, right? Perform operation. And this perform operation method accept this visitor element as a parameter, right? So you can see I visitor visitor. Then what he is going to do, he is looping through all the elements and for each element, it is calling the accept method of the visitor, right? For the kid. So you can see this kid. Kid means this kid. This kid having this accept method, so I'm looping through all the elements means I'm looping through this list of element. This element means here, it is nothing but uh, uh, what I can say kid element, right? So kid means in the kid class, we are having the accept method. So here after looping through all the students or all the kid on individual kid, I'm calling the accept method. And whoever the visitor wants to visit all the students, I'm looping through means it is going to visit all the students via this loop and whatever the visitor object this method receive as an instance that visitor object I'm passing. Now, if you go to this, suppose I'm creating, suppose I'm calling this method by visitor, by creating an instance of a doctor, right? Then doctor will visit all the students 
right by calling this accept method of the student here the doctor will go to for example k1 right k1 means raf so first first time this for each loop will execute it will access the element or the k raf so ram dot accept method right and the visitor is doctor so it is going to this accept method where this accept method this element but we need to we not to go to the definition but we want to go to the implementation so here you can see two things are there definition and implemented where the method is defined where the method is implemented so definition means only the declaration it is declared inside this interface where it is defined the method is where the method is implementation the method is implementation in the kid class so it will call this method on the visitor object right and here what visitor instance it is receiving it is receiving doctor so doctor dot visit method right and this means this nothing but your kid so kid name uh, it is passing as a parameter to the doctor class visit method where the doctor class this is the doctor class is this doctor class having one element which is taking kid because we are passing this this nothing but the current object current object is nothing but the current kid so kid is taking as a parameter and a comment to here so we are type casting that element to kid and then we are printing the kid name which the doctor visit again the first uh, element uh, the first student is visit second student doing the same thing third student we are doing the same thing right this is the object structure but the op the implementation is such that we have implemented number of a visitor can visit and they are going to perform different operations. So the doctor completed it as now another visitor come into the picture. What is the visitor name salesman? So we are going to pass the salesman instance as a parameter to this method. Again, for each student, the salesman for each student, right? We are calling the student class accept method by passing the salesman instance. So it is going to this student class accept method. First student, here the object is a salesman. And we are calling the visit method of the salesman passing the current student. So it is go to the salesman visit method and the salesman will give a back to that particular kid. And again, the same process for all the kids, right? So this is how the implementation is done, right? Now we need to check whether our application is working correctly or not. So in the application means, First of all, we need to create an instance of our object structure. Object structure is nothing but your school, right? Object because until and unless you are not creating an object of the school, the so list of students are not going to be created. If list of students are not created, uh, and I cannot perform any kind of operation. I want to perform this operation, right? right? I want a visitor to visit all the students of my uh, school. So for that, first of all, I need to create the school object. I need to create the student. I need to provide some kind of method where the visitor will visit. So we need to create an instance of the student uh, school class. I need to call this perform operation method. And while calling this perform method, I need to pass the visitor object to who wants to visit, right? So that is what I'm showing here. So I'm creating the school object means the constructor is going to be executed. The constructor is executed means list of student is created. The school student or kids are created. Then what I'm through, uh, first of all, I want the doctor to visit the school, right? So I'm creating an instance of a doctor class. But if you see, while creating the doctor instance, I need to pass the doctor name and it is implementing the iVisitor interface. So here, instead of where, if you are getting confused, so you can create iVisitor. So this is visitor one and the visitor one is a doctor. And once you create the visitor, now you want this doctor to visit all the student of the school. So what you need to do, you need to call the perform action by passing this visitor one object. This perform action method of the uh, object structure of the school, it is going to pass that visitor. Uh, uh, it is implementing the method in such a way that that visitor who is expecting, who is uh, receiving as input parameter, that visitor will visit all the elements of the school and whatever the operation is meant for that, that is going to be defined, right? And again, again, I want to create another visitor. Yes, you can create another visitor. And now, previously it is the doctor, now it is the salesman. So I'm creating another visitor and calling that and passing that visitor to the school, that is to the object structure. And now the school or the object structure will uh, uh, receive that visitor as an input parameter, that is the salesman. And that salesman will visit each student of the school and will give a back to each student, right? 
So now if you run the application, then you will see the output as expected, right? So if you see the data structure is going to be one, the method is going to be one, but we have implemented the method in such a way that, right? So it, it's basically uh, whenever the visitor changes, right? The operation is also going to change. So doctor means it is going to do the health checkup of all the students. Sales means, means it is going to give school back to all the students. Clear guys? Yes, sir. Clear. Right. So once you go through the documentation, right, once you, if you, uh, what I can say, debug the application, then you will get some better idea, right? So in our example, client is there. This is nothing but the uh, main method of the program class. You can consider the client. And this is the object structure. Object structure is nothing but your data structure, which is going to contain the data, right? List of a collection, right? This is nothing but school. In our example, is nothing but object st uh, structure. Visitor interface, uh, or you can say visitor interface, nothing but your visitor. This is the visitor interface, which is implemented by two concrete visitor, right? That is what you can see. This is concrete visitor one, this is concrete visitor two. And this object data structure, you can see it is using the element operation. That is, it is using the kit and calling the accept method. That is what you can see. It is having the element interface and that element interface, nothing but which is the interface implementing the element interface, right? In this case, uh, if you see, I'm using the I element, but that I element is implemented by the kit, right? That is what the I element and this is the kit. So these are the different components involved in this design part. Any question from anyone, whichever component you want to understand it, Guys, nice. any question from anyone? Okay. Okay, thanks. Guys, tomorrow we are having class, right? Uh, but tomorrow we are having class at 6.30. Thank you. Thank you, guys.